This time of year is often a time for reflection, a time to consider those moments that have shaped us. And it's true for our team of journalists. Often the stories we cover stay with us long after. They are stories that move us and motivate us, and we want to share our stories with you. We begin with reflections from Pope Francis's visit this past summer to Canada, a trip of reconciliation to address the pain and trauma surrounding the Catholic Church's role in our residential school system. Good evening, Pope Francis is coming to our city. After much anticipation, the Vatican confirmed his summer trip this morning. For many, it's less of a celebration and more of a step towards reconciliation. We are dealing with a piece of ongoing history that's impacted generation after generation after generation. An historic trip to Canada, the visit of Pope Francis would bring with it international attention and validation to the horrors Indigenous people had been telling us about for decades. I'm going to carry this darkness of being a residential school survivor till the day I die. Long before the papal pilgrimage of penance, global news journalists were telling the stories of what it was like in residential schools and the lasting impacts. People are pouring their hearts out and they're talking candidly and talking about these experiences that they had and many of them were very painful memories. When he was just five years old, Omiyasu was ripped away from his family and put into the Ermanskin Residential School. What a difficult and ugly change in my life, eh? It just caused me nothing but havoc. You're trying to not be involved with the story that so these people can open up to you and you're not trying to take that away from them, but it does hit you. You are watching a live shot of Edmonton International Airport where the Pope's plane is coming in now. A very brief ceremony here as Pope Francis officially landed in Edmonton. Grand's chiefs from the area, elders and residential school survivors welcomed the Pope and also asked him to walk with them on their path to reconciliation. When the Pope landed at the Edmonton International Airport and we saw all of those international media getting off the plane, local media started covering this story months, years in advance. The international media, you know, has a different focus and they might look at things differently. You know, our focus was to, to tell the local stories and to put it into that historical context that the international media might not get. The Pope's first official statement on Canadian soil, the words so many had been waiting for. I am deeply sorry. Sorry. And there was like chairs set up all over the place. Um, and then as we got closer and closer to the Pope's arrival, uh, the one thing I did notice was that not all the chairs were, were full. Um, and so I was thinking that day, you know, was it because of the weather or was it just because, uh, you know, people uh, might not have been, you know, and I use this term cautiously, interested. Not that they weren't interested, but perhaps they weren't ready uh, for the Pope's visit because, I mean, this was an emotional time for a lot of people. I mean, uh, there was a lot of build-up to this. Well, after an historic apology and an open-air mass attended by thousands in Alberta, Pope Francis continues his pilgrimage of penance east to Quebec City. Our Braden Jagger Haynes joins us live to set the scene for the pontiff's long-awaited arrival. We were anticipating thousands on thousands of people coming to the Plains of Abraham, and the biggest story was the lack of crowds for the Pope's visit. Michel Shenandoah accompanied Jonel Beauvais for a meeting with Pope Francis at the Catholic Archdiocese in Quebec City Friday morning. Not everybody's reaction to the Pope's apology was the same. There are some people who said that, yes, they were certainly happy that the Pope was, in their words, brave enough to show up in Canada to, to, to make an apology. But for others, um, the apology was certainly not enough, not even close to what they were expecting or hoping for. And for them, it's just words, unless the Catholic Church uh, takes, in their words, uh, serious steps towards reconciliation. As the visit came to an end, the promise from the Catholic Church and Canadian officials that this was just the beginning. The hope is that the media, we can continue to tell stories, of acknowledge what happened in the past, find out what we're learning from the past, find out what we still have to learn from the past, but at the same time, move forward and see what have we learned and what can we do reaching out to community leaders, to just individuals, what do you want to see 10 years from now, 20 years from now, so we can move the conversation forward. This isn't the end, this isn't where the story stops. It's our job to keep this story front and center and hold those in power to account.